Hello viewers, welcome to the channel Amazing Civil Engineering Studies. Here we will learn about different concepts related to civil engineering. Time to enter the world of civil engineering. In today's video we are going to discuss about Different types of brick cuts used in brick masonry and types of bonds in brick masonry wall construction and their uses. Brickwork Brickwork is masonry produced by a brick layer using bricks and mortar. Typically, rows of bricks called courses are laid on top of one another to build up a structure such as a brick wall. Brick is a popular medium for constructing buildings, and examples of brickwork are found through history as far back as the Bronze Age. Parts of brickwork include bricks, beds, and perpens. The bed is the mortar upon which a brick is laid. A perpend is a vertical joint between any two bricks and is usually but not always filled with mortar. Bricks of dimensions 215 mm x 102.5 mm x 65 mm. Mortar beds and perpends of a form 10 mm. There are many other brick sizes worldwide and many of them use this same coordinating principle. The dimensions of these parts are usually coordinated such that two bricks laid side by side separated only by the width of a perpend have a total width identical to the length of a single brick laid transversely on top of them. Nomenclature of Brick Brick Positions Stretcher, a brick laid horizontally, flat with the long side of the brick exposed on the outer face of a wall. Header, a brick laid flat with the short end of the brick exposed. Shiner, a brick laid on the long narrow side with the broad side exposed. Roll lock or bull header, a brick laid on the long, narrow side with the small or header side exposed. Sailor, a brick laid vertically with the broad side exposed. Soldier, a brick laid vertically with the narrow. Stretcher, side exposed. Some terminologies. Lap, it is the horizontal distance between the vertical joints of successive brick courses. Perpend, it is an imaginary vertical line which includes the vertical joint separating two adjoining bricks. Bed, it is the lower surface of the brick when laid flat. Racking back. It is the termination of a wall in stepped fashion as shown in figure. Toothing, it is the termination of the wall in such a fashion that each alternate course at the end projects, in order to provide adequate bond if the wall is continued horizontally at a later stage. Iris, it is the edge of a brick. Coin, it is a corner or the external angle on the face side of a wall. Generally, coins are at right angles. But in some cases, they can be at angles greater than 90 degree also. Frog or kick, a frog is an indentation in the face of a brick to form a key for holding the mortar. When frog is only on one face, that brick is laid with that face on the top. Sometimes, frogs are provided on both the faces. Technical term used in masonry works. Masonry is the building of structure from the different item, 
which is bound together by mortar. The selection of the type of material, i.e. brick or stone etc., for the masonry is made keeping in view the requirement of strength, waterproofing, thermal insulation, fire resistance, durability, and economy. Header It is a full brick or stone which is laid with its length perpendicular to the face of the wall. Thus a brick laid as the header will show its face measuring 10 cm 10 cm, in case of modular brick, on the face of the wall. Stretcher It is a full brick which is laid with its length parallel to the face of the wall. Thus a brick laid as stretcher will show its face measuring 10 cm 20 cm in case of modular brick, on the face of the wall. Bond, to overlapping the brick in a wall in the alternate course, to bind the whole wall together is called the bond. Bed, it is the lower surface of each course. That means the surface of the brick on which it rests. Facing the portion of the brick wall which exposed in weather. Backing the portion of the wall which not exposed to the weather. Harding, the portion of the wall between facing and backing is term as harding. Joint, the junction of two or more bricks is called joint. Joint may be filled by cement mortar, lime mortar. Joint parallel to the bed of brick in coarse terms as bed join. Bat, it is the portion of a brick cut across the width. Closer, it is a portion of a brick cut in such a manner that its one long face remain uncut. King closer. It is a brick which cuts such a way that the width of one of its end is half that of a full brick. It is formed by cutting the triangular piece, between the center of one end and the center of one. Queen closer, it is a term applied to a brick which is half width as a full brick. That means cutting it lengthwise into two part. Beveled closer, it is similar to king closer with the only difference that the whole length of the brick is beveled for maintaining half width at one end and full width at the other. Mitered closer, it is a brick whose one end is cut splayed or mitered at an angle, 45 degree 60 degree, for the full width. Prepend it's a vertical joint on the face of a wall directly over the vertical joint in an alternate course. Frog, it's indentation or depression at the top face of a brick to form a key for holding the mortar. Coin, the exterior angle or corner of a wall is termed as coin. Plinth the horizontal projection or flush course of stone or brick provided at the base of the wall above ground level is known as aplinth. D.P.C, a layer which is provided above the plinth level to cut off the capillary rise of water into the wall is called damp proof courses. D.P.C. It may be cement concrete, bitumen asphalt, bituminous concrete, etc. Sill, it is the horizontal member of brick, stone, concrete or wooden to support for the vertical member of aindo. Jams, the vertical sides of a finished opening for door, window, or fireplace etc. are terms as jams. Reveals, 
reveals are the exposed vertical surface left on the sides of an opening after the door or window frame has been fitted in position. Lintel, a horizontal member of stone, brick, wood, steel, or RCC, used to support the masonry or load above an opening. String course, it is a horizontal course of masonry projecting from the face of the wall and is generally at every floor or sill throughout the length of the wall. Cornice, it is a horizontal mold projection provided near the top of a building or at the junction of a wall and ceiling. It not only increases the architectural beauty of the structure but also serves as a barrier for shedding the rainwater off the face of the wall. Freeze It is a course of stone masonry provided immediately below a cornice. This may be flushed with the wall or may be mold. Parapet it is a term applied to a low wall built around a flat roof to act as a protective solid balustrade for the users of the terrace. Coping Coping is a covering placed on the exposed top of an external wall. It is essentially provided to prevent the seepage of water through the joint of the topmost course of the wall. Different types of brick cuts used in brick masonry. The below mentioned terminologies are used to express different forms of cut bricks used in brick masonry construction. Closer it is the portion of the brick cut along the length in such a way as one long face remains intact. It is a portion of a brick with the cut made longitudinally, and is used to close up bond at the end of the course. A closer helps in preventing the joints of successive sources, higher or lower, to come in a vertical line. Closers may be of various types, defined below. Queen Closer Queen Closer Quarter King Closer Beveled Closer Mitered Closer Queen Closer When a brick is cut along its length, making it two equal halves then it is called Queen Closer. Thus a queen closer is a broken brick portion whose width is half as wide as the original brick. This is also called as queen closer half. It is the portion of a brick obtained by cutting a brick lengthwise into two portions. Queen closer quarter If a queen closer is broken into two equal pieces then it is known as queen closer quarter. Such a closer is thus a brick piece which is one quarter of the brick size. King closer If a brick is cut in such a way that the width of one end becomes half that of a full brick, while the width at the other end is equal to the full width, then it is called as king closer. It is obtained by cutting out a triangular portion of the brick between the center of one end, width side, and the center of the other end, lay side. Thus it has half header and half stretcher face. Beveled Closer It is a form of king closer in which the whole length of the brick, i.e. stretcher face, is chamfered or beveled in such a way that half width is maintained at one end and full width is maintained at the other end. Mitered closer It is a portion of a brick whose one end is cut splayed or mitered for full width. The angle of splay may vary from 450 to 600. 
thus one longer face of the mitered closer is of full length of the brick while the other longer face is smaller in length. Vat The portion of brick that is cut across the width When a brick is cut across the width, the resulting piece is called vat. Thus a vat is smaller in length than the full brick. Three-quarter bat When the length of the bat is equal to three-quarters of the length of the original brick, it is a form of brick bat having its length equal to three-quarter of the length of a full brick. Beveled bat When a bat has its width beveled, a brick bat is called beveled bat when its width has beveled. Half bat If the length of the bat is equal to half the length of the original brick, it is known as half bat. When the length of a bat is equal to half of the length of the original brick. Beveled bat large It is obtained by cutting a portion of brick such that the three-fourth part of one face of brick and the half part of the other face. Beveled bat small It is obtained by cutting a portion of brick such that the half of one face of stretcher and the quarter of face of another stretcher of the same brick. Specially shaped bricks Bull nose, it is a special molded brick with one edge rounded, single bull nose, or with two edges rounded, double bull nose. These are used in copings or in such positions where rounded corners are preferred to sharp arises. Bull nose brick is a style of brick that has one, some or all of its corners rounded off. These brick can be used to create soft and attractive curved edges to steps, sills, or in capping walls. Cow nose, double bull nose. A brick molded with a rounded angle is termed as a bull nose. It is used for a rounded coin. Types of bonds generally found in brick work. Stretcher bond Header bond Facing bond English bond Flemish bond Dutch bond English cross bond Brick on edge bond Raking bond Zigzag bond Garden wall bond Rules for good brick bonding Uniform in size Bricks arranged uniformly throughout the wall Bats are used as little as possible the bricks in the interiors of wall laid as headers, that is, across the wall. The lap not more than 2 and 1 fourth inches. The vertical joints in every other course should be vertically over one another. Stretcher bond In this arrangement of bonding, all the bricks are laid as stretchers. The overlap, which is usually of half brick, is obtained by commencing each alternate course with a half brick bat. Stretching bond is used for half brick wall only. This bond is also termed as running bond. Is commonly adopted in the construction of half brick thick leaves of cavity walls, walls, partition walls, 
etc. Since there are no headers, suitable reinforcement should be used for structural bond. Longer narrow face of the brick is called as stretcher as shown in the elevation of figure below. Stretcher bond, also called as running bond, is created when bricks are laid with only their stretchers showing, overlapping midway with the courses of bricks below and above. Stretcher bond in the brick is the simplest repeating pattern. But the limitation of stretcher bond is that it cannot make effective bonding with adjacent bricks in full-width thick brick walls. They are suitably used only for one half brick thick walls such as for the construction half brick thick partition wall. Walls constructed with stretcher bonds are not stable enough to stand alone in case of longer span and height. Thus they then need supporting structure such as brick masonry columns at regular intervals. Stretcher bonds are commonly used in the steel or reinforced concrete framed structures as the outer facing. These are also used as the outer facing of cavity walls. Other common applications of such walls are the boundary walls, gardens etc. In this all bricks are laid as stretchers. The overlapping of half brick is obtained by commencing each alternate course with a half brick bat. This is also termed as running bond. Bricks are laid in stretchers, as in the figure. Heading or header bond Heading or header bond is laid on headers. Used for round quick sweeps, as in figure. Should never be used in straight work, as it is very weak. This type of bonding all the bricks are laid as headers on the faces. The overlap which is usually of half the width of the brick is obtained by introducing a three-quarter bat in each alternate course at coins. This bond permits better alignment and as such it is used for walls curved on plan. This bond is chiefly used for footings and foundations for better transverse distribution of load. Header is the shorter square face of the brick which measures 9 cm x 9 cm header bond is also known as heading bond. In header bonds, all bricks in each course are placed as headers on the faces of the walls. While stretcher bond is used for the construction of walls of half brick thickness whereas header bond is used for the construction of walls with full brick thickness which measures 18 cm. In header bonds, the overlap is kept equal to half width of the brick. To achieve this, three-quarter brick bats are used in alternate courses as coins. Facing bond This bond is used when the bricks for the face work are costlier than the other bricks and as such the number of face bricks is economized by using more stretchers. This bond is also used when the thickness of the face and back bricks is different. There are a number of stretcher courses followed by header courses. The thickness of stretcher courses should be multiple of the thickness of thinner bricks. For example, the thickness of face bricks is 5 cm and that of back bricks in 3 cm. Then after 3 courses of face bricks and 5 courses of back bricks the height of face and back bricks will become the same. Now at this height header course should be provided. 
English Bond English Bond consists of alternate course of headers and stretches. In this English Bond arrangement, vertical joints in the header courses come over each other and the vertical joints in the stretcher course are also in the same line. For the breaking of vertical joints in the successive course it is essential to place queen closer, after the first header in each heading course. The facing bricks are laid in alternate courses of headers and stretchers. Queen closer inserted next to coin headers to produce overlap. English bond is the strongest. Consists of alternate course of headers and stretches. In this English bond arrangement, Vertical joints in the header courses come over each other and the vertical joints in the stretcher course are also in the same line. For the breaking of vertical joints in the successive course it is essential to place queen closer, after the first header in each heading course. The following additional points should be noted in English bond construction. In English bond, a heading course should never start with a queen closer as it is liable to get displaced in this position. In the stretcher course, the stretchers should have a minimum lap of one-fourth their length over the headers. Walls having their thickness equal to an even number of half bricks, i.e., one brick thick wall, two brick thick wall, three brick thick wall, and so on, present the same appearance on both the faces, i.e. a course consisting of headers on front face will show headers on the back face also. In walls having their thickness equal to an odd number of half brick, i.e. one one-half brick thick walls or two one-half brick thick walls and so on, the same course will show stretchers on one face and headers on the other. In thick walls the middle portion is entirely filled with header to prevent the formation of vertical joints in the body of the wall. Since the number of vertical joints in the header course is twice the number of joints in the stretcher course, the joints in the header course are made thinner than those in the stretcher course. English Bond, One Brick English Bond, One and a Half Brick English Bond, Two Brick Flemish Bond Each course consists of alternate headers and stretchers. The alternate headers of each course are centered over the stretchers in the course below. Every alternate course starts with a header at the corner. For the breaking of vertical joints in the successive courses, Closers are inserted in alternate courses next to the coin header. In walls having their thickness equal to odd number of half bricks, bats are essentially used to achieve the bond. Flemish bond is further divided into two different types namely. Single Flemish bond Double Flemish bond Flemish Bond For the breaking of vertical joints in the successive courses, closers are inserted in alternate courses next to the coin header. In walls having their thickness equal to odd number of half bricks, bats are essentially used to achieve the bond. Flemish Bond, also known as Dutch Bond, is created by laying alternate headers and stretchers in a single course. 
The next course of brick is laid such that header lies in the middle of the stretcher in the course below, i.e. the alternate headers of each course are centered on the stretcher of course below. Every alternate course of Flemish bond starts with header at the corner. The thickness of Flemish bond is minimum one full brick. The disadvantage of using Flemish bond is that construction of Flemish bond is difficult and requires greater skill to lay it properly as all vertical mortar joints need to be aligned vertically for best effects. For the breaking of vertical joints in the successive courses, closers are inserted in alternate courses next to the coin header. In walls having their thickness equal to odd number of half bricks, bats are used to achieve the bond. Flemish bonds have better appearance but are weaker than English bonds for load-bearing wall construction. Thus, if the pointing has to be done for brick masonry walls, then Flemish bond may be used for better aesthetic view. If the walls have to be plastered, then it is better to use English bond. Flemish bonds are classified as Single Flemish bond Double Flemish bond Single Flemish bond is a combination of English bond and Flemish bond. In this type of construction, the front exposed surface of wall consists of Flemish bond and the back surface of the wall consists of English bond in each course. Minimum thickness required for single Flemish bond is one and a half brick thickness. The main purpose of using single Flemish bond is to provide greater aesthetic appearance on the front surface with required strength in the brickwork with English bond. Single Flemish bond This bond is a combination of English bond and Flemish bond. In this work the facing of the wall consists of Flemish bond and the backing consists of English bond in each course. This type of bonding cannot be adopted in walls less than one and a half brick in thickness. This bond is adopted to present the attractive appearance of Flemish bond with an effort to ensure full strength in the brick work. Double Flemish bond it has the same appearance both in the front and back elevations, i.e. each course consists of alternate header and stretcher. This type of bonding is comparatively weaker than English bond. Double Flemish Flemish bond, each course presents the same appearance both in the front and back elevations. Every course consists of headers and stretchers laid alternately alternately. This type of bond is best suited from considerations of economy and appearance. It enables the one brick wall to have flush and uniform faces on both the sides. This type of bonding is comparatively weaker than English bond. Dutch bond. It is a modification over the English bond and consists of alternate courses of headers and stretchers, except that every stretcher course starts with a three-quarter brick and in every alternate stretcher course in header is placed after the three-quarter brick as shown in figure. This bond is modification of Old English cross bond of alternate courses of headers and stretchers. Each stretching course starts at coin with a three-quarter bat and every alternate stretching course has a header placed next to three-quarter brick bat. English cross bond 
This is similar to English bond and consists of alternate course of headers and stretchers. However, in this bond, queen closer are introduced next to coin headers and each alternate stretching course has header placed next to coin stretcher. This bond is sufficiently strong and bears a good elevation. This is similar to English bond. Consists of alternate course of headers and stretcher. Queen closer are introduced next to coin headers and each alternate stretching has header placed next to coin stretcher. Brick on edge bond, silver locks bond or soldier's course. This type of bond uses stretcher bricks on edges instead of bed. This bond is weak in strength, but is economical. Hence it is used for garden walls, compound walls etc. Bricks are kept standing vertically on end. The bricks are arranged as headers and stretchers in such a manner that headers are placed on bed and stretchers are placed on edge thus forming a continuous cavity. Due to this, the bond consumes less number of bricks. This is a form of bonding brickwork in which bricks are laid on edge. It is economical but weak in strength and hence it is only recommended for garden walls or partition walls. In this bond, the bricks are laid as headers and stretchers in each courses in such a way that headers are laid on bed aid the stretchers are laid on edge forming a continuous cavity. A brickwork pattern similar to English bond except that each stretcher is a bull stretcher. Same as rat trap bond. Raking bond. The walls which are more than two brick thick will become weaker in longitudinal strength, as the headers being used in the interior of the wall to increase the transverse strength. This defect is removed by using raking bond, rake means inclination. In this bond the bricks are laid at some inclination to the face of the wall. This is a bond in brick work in which bricks are laid at any angle other than 0 or 90 degrees. There are two common forms of racking bond. Herring bond Diagonal bond Diagonal bond This type of bond is employed in walls, which are 2TO4THICK. In this bond, the face bricks are first laid and then the bricks are laid diagonally. The inclination of the bricks should be so adjusted that the bricks may be filled without cutting. Herring bone bond This bond is best suited for walls which are at least four bricks thick. In this case, the bricks are laid at an angle of 45 degree in both directions, commencing from the center line as shown in figure. Raking bond pattern of laying bricks is also sometimes used for laying bricks on the floors. Zigzag bond. This is similar to herring bone bond with the only difference that in this case the bricks are laid in a zigzag fashion. This is commonly adopted in brick paved flooring. Garden wall bond. This type of bond is suitably adopted for one brick thick wall which may act as a garden wall or a boundary wall. In garden wall bond, it is possible to build uniform faces for a wall without much labor or expense. 
This type of bond is not so strong as English bond and its use is restricted to the construction of dwarf walls or other similar types of walls which are not subjected to large stresses. On accounts of its good appearance, this bond is sometimes used for the construction of the outer leaves of cavity walls. There are two types of garden wall bond. English garden wall bond Flemish garden wall bond English garden wall bond the general arrangement of bricks in this type of bonding is similar to that of English bond except that the heading courses are only inserted at every fourth or sixth course. Usually the arrangement consists of one course of headers to three courses of stretchers. A queen closer is placed next to the coin header of the heading course to give the necessary lap. Flemish Garden Wall Bond This consists of alternate course composed of one header to three or sometimes even five stretchers in series throughout the length of the courses. Each alternate course contains a three-quarter bat placed next to the coin header and a header is laid over the middle of each central stretcher. Rat Trap Bond it is made by placing the bricks on their sides having a cavity of 4. 100 mm Alternate course of stretchers and headers It is still used in India as an economical bond. Rat trap bond is a brick masonry method of wall construction in which bricks are placed in vertical position or laid on edge instead of conventional horizontal position and thus creating a cavity, hollow space, within the wall. The height of each course in case of a brick size 230 times 110 times 75 mm, will be 110 mm plus mortar thickness such that the shiner and roll lock are visible on the face of masonry as shown below. This gives the wall with an internal cavity bridged by the roll lock. This cavity adds an added advantage as it adds a green building feature of help maintain improved thermal comfort and keep the interiors colder than outside and vice versa and an appropriate option as against conventional solid brick wall masonry. The rat trap bond construction is a modular type of masonry construction. Due care must be taken while designing the wall lengths and heights for a structure. The openings and wall dimensions to be in multiples of the module. Also the course below sill and lintel to be a solid course by placing bricks on edge. The masonry on the sides of the openings also to be solid as will help in fixing of the opening frame. The Advantages of Rat Trap Bond It is highly economical because Can make a wall of one brick thickness with fewer bricks than a solid bond. Strength is equal to the standard 10 inches, 250 mm, brick wall, but consumes 20%. Less Bricks Cost saving on material is 26% as compared to the traditional 10 inches brick wall. Maintains thermal comfort inside the building due to air medium. Bricks aligned on both sides, plastering not required. It is quite strong as building constructed about 40 years ago still does not show any signs of distress.
Purposes of Brick Bonding Obtain maximum strength whilst distributing the loads to be carried throughout the wall, column, or pier. If bonds in brickwork are not arranged properly, then a continuous vertical joint will result. This is called an unbonded wall having little strength and stability. See figure below. To ensure lateral stability and resistance to side thrusts. To create an acceptable appearance. Rules for bonding in brickwork. For getting good bond, the following rules should be observed. Rule 1 The bricks should be of uniform size. The length of the brick should be twice its width plus one joint, so that uniform lap is obtained. Good bond is not possible if lap is non-uniform. Rule 2 The amount of lap should be minimum one-fourth brick length along the length of the wall and one-half brick length across the thickness of the wall. Rule 3 Avoid using brick bats unless it is necessary or required in special locations. Rule 4 In alternate courses, the center line of header should coincide with the center line of the stretcher, in the course below or above it. Rule 5 The vertical joints in the alternate courses should be along the same vertical axis. Rule 6 The stretcher should be used only in the facing, they should not be used in the harding. Harding should be done in headers only. Rule 7 It is preferable to provide every sixth course as a header course on both the sides of the wall. Rule 8 Use of raked and other joints that provide horizontal water tables should be avoided. Concave and weathered joints should be provided. For now, please subscribe, like, share and do not forget to press bell icon.